Hey guys, we're back out here in the hangar working on the plane, as you see in the background. And uh, it is a gorgeous day outside. It is, it was like, um, it was like 20 degrees this morning, so it was a little chilly. But for now, it's in the 50s and really, really windy. Um, I would have loved to have gone and gotten the plane today, my little Cherokee 140. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> um, I have to get a lot of stars aligned. I have to get my my CFI and uh, the guy who's also going to take us there. So we're going to have to fly there in, in my buddy's my plane to get there. The, 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 and uh, three of us go one way and he flies back. And then the two of us get in my plane and fly it back. And I've just got to get all, all the ducks in a row. And I haven't done that yet. So that's, that's coming. But, you know, baby steps. Uh, but other than that, uh, I've been working on the plane. And I'm trying to think... Um, so I was approached by a fellow the other day that asked a really interesting question. And I don't know the answer, and so I'm gonna throw this out there to you guys. So his, his problem that he's trying to solve is that he is a paraplegic. He does not have use of his legs. And he's wanting to get an all-metal, four-place aircraft, like a Vans RB-10, but he's concerned about uh, ingress and egress of the aircraft. I mean, that's that's going to be challenging. We had talked about, you know, the, the Aero Coupe as a plane that doesn't have any rudder control and whatnot. He actually owns a uh, Cherokee, I think 180, I think he said. And he controls, he actually has a, there's a, a manual jig contraption or whatever that he has where he controls rudder entirely with his arm or his hand while he's, you know, flying the plane. Kind of interesting and he's trying to figure out a way to do something similar in the rv10 and i don't know any answers at all um so he's trying to his big concern is of course ingress and egress and you know where the door comes down there's that lip on the in the rv10 he's worried about that he's wondering if he can lower that and i don't have an answer for that i mean i mean maybe a lot of structural integrity right there i'd, I'd worry about lowering that but i i don't know and so I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I've got this wonderful community. I figured I'd, I'd use it. If you guys know of somebody that has done this in an RV, could you comment down below? Um, you know, I'd, I'd thrown out there that there are other plane options. I think, I think like the, uh, what is the Diamond DA-50 not only has that second rear door on the pilot side that he could use to get his wheelchair in and out, but also I think the door is lower to the wing route than, than the RV-10. Um, I don't know, but that's a composite aircraft. I don't know if that's what he wants. But anyways, if you guys can comment down below, if you know of anyone that is in that community that's doing this sort of thing, that would help him tremendously. And I think, um, you know, never, never tell somebody they can't do something. I, I really appreciate his, his gusto and his desire to solve this problem. So comment and uh, let him know. Thanks, guys. Let's get to work. So right now I'm working on the baggage compartment door and specifically getting uh, all the holes drilled in this hinge uh, and uh, making sure everything lines up and fits and works correctly. Uh, the, the lock, locking mechanism, the actual lock itself doesn't come with the kit, so you have to order that. Uh, I've got that on order. I looked at a number of different of lock types and things like that. And I ended up just going with, it was like a $40 lock. It's just a standard cylinder lock. But um, what's interesting is how I, I did the holes in this. Um, so you have to countersink the holes. Um, and of course, it's not quite enough room on here to um, use the cage. So I'm having to do it by hand, which is no big deal. Uh, but doing that, but getting the holes evenly spaced out, uh, it was fun. Um, I, I don't have a rivet fan. A rivet fan is what most people that used to build airplanes before everything was match drilled for us, is what they used to know exactly how to space out their rivets and make them even and look good. Um, I don't actually own one. I should get one just for the nostalgia. And it would be handy. But since I don't have one, I had to find a way to get a good row of rivets evenly drilled in this, uh, or holes rather, uh, for the rivets. And what I did is I, I kind of cheated by using these rivets up here. I don't have a rivet fan, but what I do have is a piece of metal that already has a, a CNC'd set of holes in it. And so I used a clamp, I drew 
the line across the back uh, where the rivets should go. You'll be doing that a number of times throughout your build, so just get used to doing that. And then put them on here. Uh, drilled the initial hole uh, sort of by eye so that it was ex the exact distance um, in between, you know, the, the, the amount left over was at exact distance on either end. Clecoed it in, put the other one down here, did the same, did the same thing, you know, lined it up so that it was on the hole. Oh, I can't see it right now. My eyeballs, I'm not wearing my glasses. Got it all lined up and drilled them. Um, and it worked out, worked out nicely. So um, not, not bad, not a bad way to do it. So this is gonna go on the door, the door, uh, and, and then I'm not sure how this is gonna work. So this, this piece goes in here, but now I'm starting to question whether or not I was right on this piece. So uh, this goes a little far. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Might have to, I don't know if I'm gonna pull this out or what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna research that. I may have to make a notch in this to get it in there. But on the inside, this will sit in here and this will be the hinge for the door. Okay, so here we have the baggage door. Da -da -da. Um, eh. Get that in there. It will fit like this. And I think it came together beautifully. It even has an ever so slight curve to it. Like when you're done, um, it, it just, I mean, just the barest little bit of curve, which fits perfectly. Really well done fans aircraft. Um, that's because some of these ribs on the inside are, are sport the structure the underlying structure are ever so slightly like when you bend them they're ever so slightly curved and my first thought was "Ooh, that may not be right and then no it's perfect it, everything just magically happens uh, it's magic and i had said that this uh would have to go against these like on the inside and that i was gonna have to cut it out to make room for the notch that's in here and that's not the case because there's this so this will be the bracket <coughs> that goes in here, and you can see there's a notch already cut out for this, you know, the uh, uh, laundron that's right here. So this fits up in here nicely, and I'm gonna go through and start doing the drilling on that. That fits nicely. Uh, I did use, instead of, uh, instead of using all uh, rivets in here, I did use some pop rivets on here just because on the inside it just got to, to a point where it was a pain in the ass and it was one of those things where I was actually doing more damage to the door than I was if I just used a pop rivet. So I used a pop rivets on, on some of those and so I'm really not worried about this uh, because this is not a structural part of the plane. So if I use some pop rivets, you can see across here I've used pop rivets and I'm okay with it. It'll be fine. So uh, the other issue I have is my hasp lock, which the keys over there isn't long enough. I'm going to have to look to find a different lock uh, or at least make the hasp a little longer because it just barely sticks out of here. So I, I don't know if I got the wrong one or what. So I'll fix it, that's not a problem. So anyways, so now I'm gonna go through and get this ready, get this drilled in there, and I imagine the next thing is match drilling the, uh, match drilling this hinge to fit these holes, as I imagine where we're going. So that's what we're doing now. And it's a beautiful but windy day, so. And it is indeed a beautiful but windy day. And uh, yeah, I, I had to have the hangar open. I mean, it's just gorgeous out. I haven't had the hangar open in a while because it's been so dang cold. Um, I'm, it's cool enough that I'm still wearing my jacket, but it's just it's just super nice, or super nice, rather. Um, so here I am working on getting that uh, hinge bracket that is on the inside of the baggage door all clecoed and put into place. And... And yeah, it's not hard. I think it was a little awkward at first. You'll see me kind of, you know, like right here, I'm kind of bending over and getting in there. It's rapidly approaching the point where it'd be easier to work from inside the plane. Um, but that's, you know, I, I'm not comfortable with that yet because I'm still not super happy with my uh, carriage system. Uh, I still want to lower that a little bit and, you know, make it easier to work with. And as, of course, always, you have to do a ton of drilling and deburring and everything and attaching and reattaching and then unattaching again and again and again because well that's what building the plane's about
Uh, also, uh, I'm not sure if you'll see it in this video. Um, when I put the hint of the door on, like right here, I put a bunch of tape on it. That's what you see me over there doing. I put a bunch of tape on the skin that overhangs to kind of simulate uh, the uh, seal that's going to be there because I don't actually have the door seal. That's something I'm going to have to go get. And it's just a, it's just a really thin little foam door seal, but I don't have something like that. So I use tape to kind of simulate that to make sure everything lined up correctly. And I kept going back and forth and testing it. And uh, then eventually, once I got it to where I was happy with it, I, you know, taped the uh, door in place and then proceeded to do all the various drilling and get everything happy so that I could then talk about the next part and show you the results. So that's where we're going to go from here. Okay, so I have everything installed for the baggage door. The only thing I don't have yet is the, um, there's a, what do you call it, like a door seal, like a foam that goes around it that I, I just don't have yet, so I'll have to get that. Um, but one correction I wanna make is I had said that the uh, hasp, this little doohickey here, is too short, and that is a true statement, and you don't use it. The, the, there's one that actually comes with the kit. The one that comes with the lock, eh, throw it away. Uh, but you do get two of these, apparently, so you have an extra lock. Um, now what's interesting is the, the shape of everything, such, do, <sighs> You kind of don't have to worry about getting it too exact. Like my concern was getting it exact. Um, the reason I say you don't have to get exactly 100% exact is the nature of this. I don't know what you call this plate. This where you know the 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 plate where this this piece attaches to. By its very nature, you can slide it back and forth, and so it'll actually cause kind of a pressure fit. Right now, because it doesn't have any of this padding that goes in here, um, when you put this in here and lock it, this can move. Uh, that obviously is not acceptable and won't be the case once I get the padding in there. Other than that, I think everything came out just fine. There's ever so slight drag right here, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go through and just. I mean, just a couple brushes with the file will probably take that out. So this all came out very nice, works really well. Um, I only got one key though. I thought that was odd. Uh, I don't know if that's normal that you only get one key. You'd think you'd get at least two, but whatever. So I have the one key and I'm not gonna leave it in here because um, I'll break it. <laughs> so I am, that needs to be oiled. Uh, so I am going to probably put the key over there somewhere and then close it and leave it closed. The next thing I have to do though is tap out the hinge, you know, the, the hinge pin, just pull that out uh, and take this off entirely and then do the, the mounting of this uh, to, uh, to the frame. Although honestly, it might be easier just to do that with, uh, a bucking bar because I mean I can't get there I don't know I'll have to figure out next step is figuring out how to do this next part so anyways um, baggage door came out nicely I think we're good to go there so all right now to move on to the next thing and there are a lot of things um, I actually don't know what the next part is probably working on the inside stuff right in here and then eventually finishing all this crap up there. But so that's what I'm going to do there. Uh, and then that's, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe. And if you want to do this yourself, like I tell everybody, if I can build a plane, you can build a plane. It's not hard. I would say start sooner than later because right now Vans Aircraft's delivery times are kind of high. Uh, COVID. So either way, um, if you use my builder number, which is down in the comments, Van sends me a hundred bucks. When you order your kit, it can be any one of the Vans kits. It's no money out of your pocket. It's just a way for them to say thank you. So anyways, thank y'all a bunch. I'll see you next time.